so, uh, Ryan Sweeney, Jack County, full stack modular. Um, so for us today, uh, I think to, to start this out is just a little bit of introduction. Um, you know, 461 Dean Street was mentioned uh, before. Um, full stack modular has been a company for two months right now. <laughs> so thanks for having us. Um, but uh, it was a little transition for us because both of us were part of FC modular uh, prior to that for about a year and a half. Um, so basically, uh, with 461 Dean Street, when that restarted, uh, when Scans can parse the other thing, um, I joined up the factory uh, April 2015. Zach came along uh, November. Uh, November. Yep. Um, and it was just for us, you know, again having a relationship to the shop. Um, you know, you heard John say, I think for the plus, uh, Barclays B2 was happening. So I was actually not even part of the module process when it began. So it was kind of nice to come into the factory and kind of take a step back and kind of see how this whole. Things coming together and to be a part of getting that building complete. And ironically, I was steering way clearer of B2 at the time uh, it was being designed and shot. And here I am. <laughs> um, yeah. So, just some other quick name Roger Krulak. So, he's the one, um, he's the CEO of the company. Uh, he put together a very large investor contingent, uh, purchased all the assets from Far City. So, I know some confusion with that. Far City is no longer attached to the factory, it's just a full stack module. It is us, it is Roger, and Adam Gerber as well, uh, who heads our. Um, product design development, so, um, so that's general introduction. Um, so today, the who, the what, the why, and the how we do it, we stuck that little plan to, because again, being two months old, we don't want to you know, talk about what we intend to do. Uh, the factory is great, so we're still in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, we took over the space, 100,000 square feet we have there. Um, like I mentioned, 100,000 square feet, we have about six bodies in there right now, so there's a lot of room to disappear. Uh, <laughs> Everyone gets their own office. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, the people we're showing there, uh, the capabilities, once we, we get up running right now, so we're, we're capable of having about 20 workers um, in the factory at one time on one ship. Uh, that's what, there's actually a little bit more that took to finish B2, but again, a lot of the analysis that we've done, we're trying to find efficient processes for the building forward, and that number might be more about 140 people to actually do something very similar to this. And uh, you know, those are blockheads there. Um, so what we want to do as a company, so not only be a manufacturer, but we'll also to do design build. So a little bit different from the model previous. Uh, we are very interested in, in wrapping the contracts into under our entity. Um, so the, the engineering of the building, the on-site contractor. Um, so we still will work with the Turners, the Plaza Constructions, you know, anyone, you know, pretty much one name it, but they'll be working for us under a design build contract, uh, which I think is, is good because um, we want to, because this model, you really need to control your product from not only the starting the design and building it, but that even <coughs> on site stuff, there's a whole other world once it leaves your factory door. We just want to make sure that kind of we're in control from start to finish when we hand the keys over to the, the client very end. Um, core markets here, just yes, I mean it's cool. Um, but this is what we're doing. It's, it's we're not, you know, we're housing for television families. <laughs> <laughs> we're thinking inside the box, so it's like, you know, the box is, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, this is what our market is, and you know, it's it's very. Um, the floor plans, of, you know, you have your kitchens, you have your bathrooms, you know, we want to really, I think that's what the next slide says, is how do we keep improving on those products? Like the, the design, it's not a mystery for what these clients are looking for. Um, and, you know, B2 was the start of it, and as we keep going from product to product, we're only going to see this get better. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think we're doing that, but <laughs> sure. Um, a little bit of the, the, the schedule here we want to do also, design build agreements and things like that, you know, we're calling out our GMP. So the one big thing is we want to get to cost certainty of, of a lot of the process. So um, we don't have dates up here because we still have to kind of massage that a little bit, but we really think with starting a project within about six months, seven months, like here's your cost to the owner and that's it, GMP to them, and we can get this done. Um, everything prior to that GMP is really, it's a, it's a collaboration of us with the designer. So while the engineer might be part of our team, you know, the architects still might be kind of like outside of that bubble or with us, you know, that will just, that's project basis, we'll see how that works out. But we think the design process can really have been shortened because again, thinking of those core markets, it's like, okay, here's what they're building, what's their unit mix. Um, and then as we design our, the, the 
products within, or the sub-assemblies within, we can offer that information to designers up front so they know kind of what space they're building. So it really becomes a lot more of how do you generate layout based on of what you're given for the, um, for the, the, the building uh, layout, and, and then how they take our parts and pieces and play it out within. And then there's a whole bunch of parameters and guidelines that we want to put forward at the very beginning that's going to help you build the most efficient design out of it. Yeah, and part of the way we're doing that is we're, we're basically cheating and reducing our problem space into uh, you know those core markets that, that Brian mentioned. So, um, and, and the ways we, we're doing that is we're establishing some, some pretty clear guidelines with our clients early on. Um, you know, on the, on the left, it's a little hard to see uh, this. Uh, I'm very lazy at doing PowerPoints, and so I did a screenshot, uh, you know, snipping tool of a smaller image because I couldn't find the source one. But anyway. Um, <laughs> There's a uh, you know a typical floor plan on the left um, that has you know traditionally you'll have mirrored mirrored situations and that's not ideal for modularization because then we have to uh, basically do a new drawing type or a new documentation type retrain the, the line on how that flight configuration uh, makes makes our lives difficult so uh, in a modular floor plan we want to make all the bathrooms the same we want to distribute uh, everything toward the corridor things like that. Um, so we're developing those with, the, with our clients, and uh, one of the things that we're, we're dealing with is, you know, we have like three or four uh, different types of, of projects that are um, uh, units that we're dealing with, so studios, hotels, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, let's say. Uh, and in this case, we're, we're standardizing the width of, the, of these chassis, uh, and that allows us to not change our line in terms of the width. The lengths can change. That's not as, as big, as critical of, uh, of a problem. Um, but we can also, we also want to be able to make like a factory within a factory. And we do that by creating smaller pods of uh, basically modules. Um, and so for, for in this case, there's a kitchen pod and a bathroom pod, and they're all the same, and they can all address each one of these configurations. Um, so we're, we're still kind of refining these layouts, but at the same time, we know that we can detail this bathroom like one time, teach the line how to do it one time, uh, and it's the same for every, every uh, install. Uh, we can you know, swap out finishes, things like that, um, but at the same time, like the, the procedures and the process for building those uh, are the same. So uh, in general, we're looking to make as many sub-assemblies as possible uh, and encode all that information in there. Uh, and we're starting to do this from the beginning of the design, so when we meet with a client, we like to, uh, we're, we're, we're um, taking their pro forma, Putting it in, pulling out zoning information from you know we're using it's not as not as awesome as, as what Luke and, and his team are doing, uh, but we're pulling out like map Pluto data sets, getting rudimentary zoning information uh, early on. Um, we have you know grasshopper definition that we're using to kind of quickly analyze the site and put in uh, unit mixes, so we can we can kind of play with a couple of sliders, get uh, feedback on the unit types that we're that uh, the client wants to put in there. And because we, we know exactly what the costs are for each one of these types of, of buildings or, or units, uh, we can fairly quickly, within the span of five to ten minutes of sitting with the client, give them a, a, like a number that's like maybe 80 to 50 to 80 percent confidence on cost of their project. Um, and so we can play around with that, and I think that's a, that's a great tool for them to make decisions so that they can say, well, let's go with a little bit fewer studios, and how does that um, uh, affect the cost of the building, as well as we're, we're now starting to put in some market research data from uh, another company that we're dealing with uh, as well, so we can be, make really informed decisions at the beginning of the stage and get to cost certainty uh, a lot quicker. Um, so, like I said, when we're talking about uh, these pods and these sub-assemblies, we're doing it through, it, it, as opposed to kind of construction documentation where we draw an intent of how we want the thing to be built um, and sending it to, you know, a, a contractor to, you know, figure out the means and methods. Um, we're really, because we're, we have the luxury of being within a factory and we can tell uh, our team how to build it, uh, we are doing a, a kind of different take on it, which is called process engineering, where we really go through the steps of creating um, a kind of sequence diagram, uh, if you will, of how specific sub-assemblies get built. Yeah, uh, speaking to this too, um, when I've shown the schedule before, when we get to that GMP point, so how do we work with the designers? 
The conversation right now is really we're telling kind of the architects that we're working with is like we need you to take your documentation uh, to like a DD plus, you just coined it the other day, you know, level. Because from that, we don't need anything for that. Like, we don't need a full construction set in order to do what we need to do because we have our own team in house that's kind of going to take the D, that DD level information and then kind of work that into our production model. So, I mean, there's going to be some instances in like, you know, the stuff that shops doing where like facades or other things that we might want to incorporate and collaborate, but the actual build out all the construction materials and things like that, the bathroom pod, that's going to be a model that we're going to produce in house and then we're going to kind of feed that back in the loop so that we could share it in back to the engineers and the architects who have to approve it. So it's kind of maybe a different way that we can even look at how shop drawings are process. We don't call them shop drawings. We're going to build this production model. It's an as-built model. And we're going to feed that back to you to get your approvals before we go to build. And that's part of the, the process engineering. Yeah, and the thought is that it speeds up the uh, that approval process as well, because rather than kind of sending out a submittal to the different parties involved, we send a submittal out to, let's say, the, the designer of the project and the owner. Um, and we can we say, this is the one you're going to use, and we just bought it. Does that sound great? Cool. All right, we put it in there, and uh, it's, we're good to go. Um, so there's no kind of you know back and forth between approvals of, of a lot of different parties. Um, and we can we can do that because we're we're really controlling how the uh, uh, the buildings get built essentially. Um, so again, there's there's no mystery in terms of uh, we're kind of throwing this over the wall to um, to you know a, a contractor and kind of hoping that it comes out the way we want. We're really kind of controlling that and defining everything, and then that allows us to kind of implement change if necessary um, and go into the go into the factory and, and really say. Uh, you know, if there's a problem, we can address it early and iterate that and, and change it for the next, you know, the next bathroom pod or the next assembly. Um, yeah. Um, right. And I, I think this speaks to the iPhone again. Is like, um, you know, we're fortunate to take a lot of the data from B2 and kind of continue with that. Um, our, our process is, you know, on the, the floor. We're, we're constantly analyzing the different schedules and how long it's taken to build things. And, um, even just the different vendors of how we procure that material. Um, so it's, it's just a lot of system, uh, a lot of processes in that whole system that we have to bring together. You know, so right now we're talking to different companies how we're going to invest in the ERP system to bring this all together. I mean, again, everything, the model itself, you know, we're a little agnostic how we're going to approach that right now. So we are, there are a lot of different tools out there. You know, of course, Reddit, there's the experience. There's, I mean, there's other things that we need to look at and figure out what's going to work best for us. It's going to be a mix of everything for sure. Um, you know how that data comes out. You know, we, you can see up there the production drawings and how all that the, the build material is going to feed into our ERP system. Um, because that, I mean, that was for in the factory for when uh, 461 D was getting built. There was a little disconnect from inventory from what was being built. So again, we we were fortunate enough to have a year and a half to kind of see of how all this was working, and now we can. Uh, we, yeah, we know how not to build a modular building, um, <laughs> as well as hopefully to build one now. Um, well, uh, you know, um, so uh, uh, one of the things that, that why we kind of feel confident in that is that we are continuously trying to improve our process. <clears throat> and we're doing that through the lean manufacturing techniques across the board. Um, this is a, a quick study in the middle of, of building 461 Dean, uh, in which uh, on the left you can see the way the factory was laid out um, uh, during the Skanska uh, days. Uh, and then when we took it back over, uh, a way that we uh, modified the factory layout and the assembly of these modules uh, in order to get to uh, uh, get our um, production moving much more quickly uh, without as many delays or, or kind of bottlenecks. And um, it, it just as a highlight, this is going from what we were calling a group technology work cells, basically building the building and assemblages of the floor plate uh, to a single chassis workflow where we split out every chassis uh, and made them their sort of own island. Um, and the, that allowed us to say, you know, if there was any problem uh, with, a, with a chassis that, you know, it, it was out of plumb or whatever, uh, or there was a piece missing, like a bathroom pod that was supposed to be installed that didn't get installed for whatever reason, that, that one chassis wouldn't hold up all these other ones that were tied to it. So by breaking it apart, we were allowed to kind of uh, move through these, these different chassis more quickly and, and kind of increase our productivity. Yeah. It's more, better allocation of the workforce too. GTW was more like a construction site where you had a bunch of uh, uh, 
guys and gals all going in one space and working on multiple modules at the same time where you do the single chassis, you now have a very focused team who's focused on that one chassis, and then their repeatability because they're building that same chassis as it moves up the road. Right, yeah, so you don't, you, in the one on the left, you have the problem of, of every construction site, which is people uh, in the way, uh, we're out of time. <laughs> no, wait! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so where we're, where we're going, uh, where, where we'd like to take this is, is really to kind of define a product, create a library uh, of, of sub-assemblies and things that we can reuse and know the costs of and kind of hand over to uh, designers, potentially and architects, and, and to kind of help build their building. So really, really on the Lego model. Yeah, the, the pipeline for 2017 is what we're talking to right now, so it's not all 32-story. Hours. I mean, we yeah, are we're not trying to set any guess but world records again. Yeah, we're, we are looking at low rise. I mean, we just we we know we need to do this from the beginning and, and have a completion on our own, you know, on our own terms, and we'll get through that. So see how it goes. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll talk to you guys. Thank you. <laughs>